Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I wanted to show in this video a method that I've been playing with to allow you to not have to do an intraoral pickup of overdenture housings. Uh, I know that when I was practicing, that was one of the most annoying things that we did. It was very prone to having screw ups. Uh, you know, sometimes you could lock a denture on, other times you might not have it fully passive, and one of them gets tilted out of place. And once that happens, you just never get the overdenture to seat correctly anymore. And so it's a huge advantage, not only in the time savings and, and the efficiency, but also just in the overall quality if we can eliminate that intraoral pickup and do this in a digital manner. So it's extremely easy. I'm just going to briefly go through the steps and then I'll show you some uh, demonstration examples. So this was just done on uh, some models and I've just printed a monolithic denture, but the same would apply to milling. And the important thing to do here, uh, and there's multiple ways you could do it, you could put scan bodies on the implants and register them, but this is just very simple. If you would just go ahead and place your super snap housings onto the overdenture abutments and then take your master impression, then you can pour that up and scan it with either a desktop or an intraoral scanner, but the resulting model will be what you see right here. And now that we know what the shape of the exterior of that overdenture housing is, we'll be able to build in an offset inside of the denture so that you should be able to pop those things right into the denture with no glue, no pickup or anything. And so what you're seeing here is just going through the digital denture module. This is the step for the blocking out. Um, however, I would suggest don't do any blocking out, you could actually take this slider that's on the right hand of the screen and slide it all the way to the right to maintain the undercuts. The most issue that you'll have is you might end up with a bit of undercut right here underneath the, uh, the housing where you might have to adjust it, but we want to maintain some of those undercuts because if you'll remember these retentive beads are what holds the uh, super snaps in place. If you remove the undercut, then now you're going to be required to use some acrylic or some glue to hold those in. So take this slider all the way up to the right uh, to maintain all of your undercuts. And then the other important thing is to properly set up your offset for the denture. So this step, which is step number two in the denture process, uh, allows you to create the overall offset of the denture base. Now, if you wanted that to be a dead zero, which is certainly uh, a good option, you might have to go ahead and go into Mesh Mixer or one of those type programs and just offset the overdenture housings because those for sure have to have a 0.15, maybe 0.2 uh, amount of offset in order to pop in there and to be retained. But in my experience with an overdenture, uh, with dentures in general, if you have just a 0.15, you know, uh, offset, that's not going to really affect the the dentures fit to any degree that they can perceive. And so, I would just suggest for simplicity, just take your offset and slide that up to 0.15, and then go ahead and make your denture with the normal process. And here you see the resulting denture. Uh, if you've used this module, you know that you're going to have two options. You can, at the end of it, either print a base in pink and the teeth in white or mill, uh, or you can do the uh, monolithic denture. And so just for simplicity, that's what I've done here is I went ahead and created the monolithic denture and then just 3D printed that. And so I did a couple of them just to have uh, a couple to experiment with when I was trying this out. but. You know, 40 minutes to print this is very fast. And so now let's jump over to uh, the models and just demonstrate. So again, just to quickly review, we just scanned the uh, what we'll call the patient model with those super snaps in place, designed a denture with 0.15 of offset. And once we do that, we ought to have a denture that's going to fit in perfectly. The housing should pop in with no glue and it's just a much easier process with no need for all the acrylic and mess of an intraoral pickup. Okay, so I've gone ahead and printed my denture. As you can see, it's got the wells already made in the uh, internal of the denture, and you really can't see very well, but it's even got the retentive undercut. That's one of the nice things about printing is that you can print in these undercuts, whereas if you mill, you'll probably need to just do it with a uh, 
a straight sil cylinder type hole that will be very precise, but you may need a drop of acrylic or any, something like that. But in any case, let me just show you how easy this is. I'm gonna take these, uh, the high retention super snaps, open them up. I don't need the, the rings or anything for this scenario. I'm simply going to take the snap and position it and then pop it into place. That easy. And then we'll do the other one. So now our locator or our super snap overdenture housings are in place. You can see no glue or anything was used on those. And now let's test the fit. Nice snap fit. And that's not going anywhere. There we go. And again, the important part is that these do stay in place. You know, I'm not, I didn't glue them, didn't do anything. They just went in perfectly, lined up with everything on the model. And, you know, this could be easily changed out if you need to, rip these out, pop in some new ones. Uh, but eliminating that intraoral pickup or a traditional lab pickup, man, that's just such a huge advantage. So I hope you found that helpful.